to another episode of Design Recharge. I'm Diane Gibbs, your host, and today I am joined by John O'Neill. He is the founder and director of ThinkHouse. It's a socially conscious design firm, and I'm going to just read his bio because he's pretty impressive. Um, and if I had to remember it all, you would never, he, he wouldn't feel as, or seem as impressive if I wasn't reading it. Sorry about that. So he has been um, being a designer for 13 years, and he's also a professor as well. His activities are focused in two areas, socially, social entrepreneurship and academia. Um, very similar to me, so it's awesome. Um, he's the founder and director of Think House, a socially conscious graphic design company located in Virginia. He also currently serves as a visiting professor of graphic design at Cho Wan. I have asked him like 100 times how to say that, and I always, I'm sure I messed it up, but he's at Chowan University. He has also taught at Virginia Commonwealth University and Virginia State University. The common thread in all these activities is his involvement with socially conscious practices and promoting the use of design to solve business, social, and cultural problems. This led to him to found and develop House Talk, which we're going to talk about, which is amazing. Another thing that's amazing John does. Um, a socially conscious public forum so people can learn from each other and discuss important issues in society. John has also the, founded the Design Teachers Network, which I know a lot of my other professor friends will be excited to know. It's a website where design educators can share information, helping to improve the quality of our teaching. In 2009, um, John was named Style Weekly's Richmond's Top 40 Under 40 as one of the young professionals working for social change in his community. His design work has expanded across several platforms. He has some huge clients, and he's done print, web, brand identity. I mean, he's kind of all over it. And he definitely has been awarded and published in international books for logo design, design layout, sustainability as well in graphic design. He also is an amazing photographer, which I can't wait to show you. We have like four images. I had a ton to choose from, but I just pulled four. Um, and he holds a, he got his BA or BFA from Virginia Commonwealth University, so we're both Rams, and and he graduated uh, cum laude or yeah cum laude, uh, which is pretty awesome because VCU's uh, number one public school for graphic design, which is awesome to be able to graduate with that high of a GPA. And then also he went to and got his master's at Rochester Institute of Technology. So. Super impressive, and I don't know how he has time to do all the things that he does, but he obviously finds time to do them. So, John, thank you so much for coming today, and I can't wait to jump into our questions. So, yeah. <laughs> well, cool. So, when when did you decide? Um, I don't know. I can't remember when you graduated from RIT, and then you. When did you start? Think House. Was it after or before? Or can you tell us a little bit about that and why you decided to do socially conscious design? Well, I I graduated in uh, 04 and um, I started. Um, uh, well, I guess the the uh, official date when I started was uh, at, at the beginning of 2007. 2007. So. About yeah, so I can't make it in 2006, but um, because I, I was seeing and all the people work for my, my business license and all that, uh, I, I, I dropped the name Fake House in 2006. So you started it, and it's actually specific, like um, he did a B Corporation. And a B corporation. I don't really actually know a lot about that. And I know you um, I, you gave me some notes, so I'm going to put them up. But can you tell us a little bit about why you chose a B corporation? Well, uh, I like to explain what that is first, and maybe so we give you some context of why I did that. Um, and the first thing I can say is that. Um, um, to be a big club, you had to be certified. So you just cannot sign up for it. You, know, you had to be uh, certified. So you had to go through uh, a, a, a assistant, and you had to offer 
all kinds of people work to the BNAB, and the BNAB is the organization that survives companies. So after you uh, take the um, certification, uh, they, they will give you a score, and the pit behind what the score is, it can be listed as a big one or not. So you have to get 80 points or above. So my score, the thing I, I believe it was 128, something like that. So, um, and, uh, so they break it down to different categories. So that's the first thing. Um, and the reason why um, you are certified is because there are many different companies I am today that are advertising themselves as being social crisis and being the white man or why not. Um, but uh, there is a good party that so far these companies combined to say that they have met different standards that to say they're doing the, the right thing. And, 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 and that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, it makes sense. So, so, so did you know from the beginning you wanted a B corporation or is that something you just as you started thinking about doing a business you thought you found all these other things that you were like wow I could maybe try to be certified as a B corporation uh, well I knew about it uh, before you know, before I, I guess saw it sick of and um, I guess as I was continuing on all with my, with my business I thought it was possibly going to be something that I could do for Snake Ops. And um, I just didn't want to be a company that, you know, advertised the South as being a Susan Curtis graphic design company. Um, I just wanted to have um, a, a backing by uh, a good part to say that I, I'm doing what I say I'm doing. So it kind of, um, you know, in my, in my uh, opinion, it takes it to the last level of, of saying, you know, like, I'm, I try to be, you know, as high a sales as possibly can. Sales that are not my own, but a different part. Well, and it also so. keeps you kind of accountable of what jobs you're taking, right? Because you have to... It makes, it makes it more accountable for, for the company that I own and I operate. So, um, so what that really is, is that the B Corp takes a look at uh, three different aspects. It takes a look at um, uh, people, the environment, and the economy as a whole. So, um, you know, it's just a look how you are affecting the three different areas. So, um, so uh, I mean, they will give you a different score for each category. Um, so, and they have you know, different sub categories go along with that. And it was, I don't remember off, off my head. But, um, so, it's not just about being green, it's not necessarily about uh, doing the Evergold thing. Uh, it's a combination of all those different things. Which I think is, you know, you know, really special about it. That, you know, uh, you, know you just have to focus on all the different areas um, at one time. And, you know, just like with smart company, you know, we are more dominant in one area than some areas, but you know, we do have to focus on uh, you know, the whole gamut in terms of how we affect our society and the environment. Definitely. Well, cool. Well, I mean, it, it takes more work to do what you did, and I think that's awesome. This is also, um, you shared with me this um, link for bcorporation.net, so 
gives if people are interested in doing that it does kind of give you a little bit more clout when people say you know when some companies are trying to do more socially conscious they're trying to stand out they would choose you as opposed to, I mean granted your designs awesome anyway but um, but they would that's another way that they look to the outside world or to the government or whoever um, to their followers their people that they're really trying to do something and I mean I think the stuff that you did for Haynes is um, is one of those uh, shows that as well which we're gonna get to in a minute um, right and you know, I should, I should add the fact that um, at the big club we did um, the beer no go um, so we see that a couple that has the beer no go is is a is to be in a circle around it. Uh, that's, that's almost like a, you know, what you would see at a grocery store, you buy an organic um, food. You know, when you go to the get something that's organic, there's a, an organic label on it. So it's the same idea. So when you see that, um, you know that that company is so far to be a big right. company. So I mean, you have to work harder to keep your B corporation status as well. I would think you have to probably prove stuff. Well, me can be can be at any time. So, so um, the the big lab is one of the whole organization. Uh, they can come in up tomorrow if they want, and they can. No, I see the fact of what I'm doing. Uh, they haven't come in yet, so <laughs> <Thank> I guess <goodness. laughs> that's a good thing. But, um, but I think my certification is going to be coming up really soon. So I have to be recertified. Um, I think uh, sometime um, in, in during the oh, summer. So, but it's every year? So I, I, I make a full. Oh, every two years. Okay. Well, cool. So, um, so being a social entrepreneur, what does that mean exactly? Uh, well, um, to be honest with you, I don't I consider myself that much different from any other graphic designer mm -hmm. uh, because the reason why I say that is because. Um, if not focused on social conscious efforts um, as the graphic designer, if we are behind the eight ball. Um, every company these days um, is focused on one aspect of social conscious. So um, they, may, they might even hire uh, different uh, people to work also you know how how sustainable they are. Um, you know how much they are reducing waste, stuff like that. So, um, and as a graphic designer, uh, you know that's that's becoming more and more a part of the whole design process on um, on what. Uh, in what ways we can reduce space, you know, and the uh, materials that you use, how you design it, you know, uh, what it is, the things that it's designed, what happens after it's used, you know, stuff like that. So, um, it's just, so I'm, I'm doing that. So, I, I really don't really, you know, make it to I don't really think myself that it's any different to that. I guess the only, if there is a difference, it would be the fact that I made a commitment to doing uh, this kind of lucid conscious design uh, on a high level, I guess, or more, make it more of yeah. what I do. Well, that's good to know. I mean, you know, so many people nowadays say social, and instead of we're talking about people, we're talking, you know, it'll be like, you know, on social media or something. So, you know, that's just kind of a clear for, for some people maybe. But um, so, 
how much of your time yeah. is spent consulting and strategizing? Because on your website, on, and I'll sit, give all his websites. He has two different websites, or three actually, but I'm just going to share two today. Um, the, um, you know, you're you're having to consult, and because sometimes it's about what kind of paper you're going to be printing it on, or hey, could we do this without paper, or or whatever. So, uh, how much is of your time is spent? strategizing and the marketing plan and sustainability with clients and then how much is um, spent designing I guess yeah well uh, it really depends on the project and what the client needs and um, and uh, as you see uh, in my bio you know I design different Bands, you know, one project can be a website, you know, another project could be a ten piece. So uh, that really drives what I how I to start the client. Um, but that, um, um, I also for you a, a book that I highly recommend. It's called Green Graphics Design. Um, and uh, there's several books out there that 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 uh, discusses, you know, you know, uh, this topic and graphic design. But in my opinion, it, uh, I think this is one of the best ones because it um, talks about how you can design so the whole life cycle of the material that is designed for. So in terms of all that, you know, how you can, you know, based on uh, before you actually design the piece on how you can maximize paper and ink, stuff like that. But I also talk a lot about, you know, designing for the end use of the materials that, that, is, uh, that is designed for to uh, to, uh, to consider um, what happens to that piece after it you know, goes to the waste. Right. You know? And um, so uh, that, that's a great book. Um, so if, if you don't know what the book is, I'll have it right So and on Amazon, it's fifteen seventy five. But here's what happens when I bring something on camera, um, you can actually. It, drag your mouse over it and then you can move it off so you can still see John's face you can put it on top of my face if you don't want um, or you can I, I always put it on the chat so I can at least see the bottom chat but I usually do that and so I'm gonna bring a lot of things on camera today because uh, John had a lot of stuff to show us so um, I just wanted y'all to know and you actually can purchase the book right here from the um, the link is about the book is um, I know I'm designed to uh, put that book t together, so it has all the work that they did and how they did it, so it gives you the insight of what, how they did it, you know? so, um, it, it, it's like I think it's one, it's, it's a good book, and it's one of the favorite books that I probably read from start to finish, so. Well, there's a couple other books that you recommend, and um, if people remember, I've actually had Noah Scalin on. Do you want to talk about what this, how, why you recommend this one, the Design Activist Handbook? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, um, Noah Scalin is an uh, amazing uh, graphic designer, as many of you know, um, and he also teaches uh, a course on this topic at VCU. Um, so this is a book that I guess came from that course. Um, but it's really a good, it gives it gives a good summary of uh, the whole you know uh, habit of social conscious design um, and what that embodies and what that what does that really mean for different people. Um, and one of the misconceptions that people have is that you know, uh, it's just about design for nonprofits. It's just about 
being green. It's more than that. Um, if you have, uh, you know, a uh, a corporate company, uh, they work for, or if you got corporate clients, uh, uh, you can uh, gain different sorts of spark and how you can incorporate different aspects of social classes in your work for that company. Cool. Well, I know after the book came out, uh, a month or two months later, Noah came on and gave us kind of a um, author's note. So I I love the book as well. So and I would have loved to have taken the course, but um, anyway, super cool. So I'm gonna remove that. And you have one other book, I think, right? Um, the and I had never heard of this one, so I, I was I glad to. Well, uh, the, reason, the reason why I recommend that book is because, um, you know, um, design thinking is a big part of what I do as a graphic designer. Um, design thinking is um, buys everything that I, you know, that I do uh, uh, in terms of how I think through a problem that, that I'm given. Uh, it's also um, uh, plays a heavy importance to the things that I teach as a as a professor. Uh, so this is a this is a good book on how um, come breaks down um, the whole second system and how they, they can be applied not just to uh, graphic design but more of the ball different discipline. Definitely. So do you want to talk about some of your systems? So that seems to be like an important part of your teaching as well as your design. Most of your de designs have huge yeah. systems that you've created, which is really cool. So I want to bring up the Metro mm -hmm. Cache, if that's, does that sound, we can plop that in there? Yeah, that's, that's cool. Just, um, okay. Yeah. So the first one, I didn't do all of them because um, there really are a ton. But this is, I think this is the logo, I guess. And can you kind of explain what Metro Cache is? Yeah, I'm, I'm more happy to. Um, Metro Cache is a nonprofit organization. It is also free. Cash, what does it say? To anyone that makes only $51,000. So if you are missing investment, and you make only $51,000, you can utilize um, 51 under $51,000. Wow, yeah. yeah, this is amazing. And the idea behind it is, um, uh, it's the fact that you know, I don't have to about you, but uh, but when I did my classes this past year you know, in 2000, uh, and 15 for my passes in 2012, half of my refund went to the person that did my taxes. So that was you no know, money out of my pocket that I could get back. <laughs> right. And, um, you know, so um, for me right now, it's not really uh, a big deal. But, um, but for some families, it can make a big difference for them. So, um, and, and that's really what, uh, I'm, again, I'm not really an expert on, on why that is, but um, just how I can best, best explain it, you know? And uh, so they came to me, uh, Wanted to have a campaign um, done so that they can advertise the services that they have. And uh, I lived in Richmond for a long time. I never heard of them ever right. before. Um, so, and they kind of explained what they did and you know, everything. And um, so um, at the bottom of um, uh, Emma's is what they had before I redesigned 
Yeah. So yours is much um, better. You know, so <laughs> well, uh, so I kind of talked to them about you know um, what what does this that mean? You know, what does the MS the oil of the, the oil for the oil go? What does that mean? You know, and they kind of spoke about uh, you know, that there's a connection between different people and different families and uh, if you help one family, you help in multiple families and stuff like that. Um, so um, the the uh, the image that I created uh, kind of symbolizes, you know, um, that you know, if if you can, or it can, it can be seen as a link between different elements. So kind of symbolizes the, the idea. Well, and did you also kind of give them some ideas um, about, you know, what, um, what, uh, where to put their stuff? Or do you think, or did they, because like the next one I'm going to bring up is the, the bus um, ones. Was that something that you kind of helped them or did they already kind of have an idea? Hey, we want to do buses. Uh, yeah, 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 but this one, I already had the idea of the buses, and I was, um, really behind that idea, I thought it was a good idea, um, and, uh, so, there was, there was, after I designed it, I go, this is the first application that I designed, so, this is cool, because I never designed an app for bus yeah. before. So, and what was fun about it too is, I went to a meeting with them, and, um, and after the meeting, I was driving down a Bob Street. If anyone knows uh, this man, uh, then we know what Bob Street is. I'm driving it down to the street on private on board, and a bus comes right in front of me, and so was my friend. <laughs> so, and that was kind of cool. That's <laughs> okay. Um, so, um, but, um, so they said that they got a pretty good response from that. You know, people, uh, were, they were aware of that because of, of the bus. So it was actually internal signs. The one to the right is an internal, inside the bus, and then the rest is the other people on the outside. So, Okay, so the uh, I, I designed two of them. One is for the outside, and one is That's for the inside. That's cool. Outside. So, and then you also, um, I'm going to pull up the um, the you did responsive, um, which you know, if people yeah. aren't there, uh, so many people are now putting, you know, looking at sites on mobile devices. It's incredibly important to have it responsive. So, especially since this was free. Um, mm. I, I think it's great, and it's a great um, way to go about it. So, you want to talk about how you did it? How did you create it? Did you do all the coding, or did you do like a WordPress kind of? Uh, yeah, I, I did um, everything. I did the uh, the coding. I did um, uh, the, the uh, design um, and everything. So, um, it's actually not a live yet. I'm still working on the website as right now and hopefully um knock on wood um it's gonna go live in the next week so that's that's my goal to make it live next week but um and you're finishing the semester. but i was thinking um yeah i was um yeah i just been crazy busy in school and, and this but um but i was fairly animated uh, about being responsive because it will first of all it will help you know make uh, this nonprofit more accessible to more people. Uh, given that people use uh, multiple devices and, and iPads and stuff like that to access information, so I I thought it was necessary from that standpoint. 
Um, and, you know, and, you know, I, I believe that um, if you design uh, uh, a website these days, you, you do have to uh, consider all types of different devices. So um, that's just a point of, of, of run design these days. Um, and what, the other thing why I like about this as well is that um, it incorporates design thinking as well on how your layout um, needs to adapt to each device. So that, uh, that does incorporate design thinking as well. And I do have one as a book that I recommend. I haven't read it yet, but I, I just got it a couple of days ago, and it's called um, Modern Book. So that is uh, a book that I highly recommend um, for anyone to be. Um, I'll try to bring so, it up. That one. Is it by, yep, here it is. Let me click it and I'll share it. About Luke, I can pronounce his name. Robleski or something. I'm sure I just uh -huh. totally messed it up. When you guys see what his name is, it's it's uh, not an easy. And, 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 uh, and basically, talks about you know design for the multiple um, folks and work way out upward. So, and there's there's not more to that, but but um. And that's basically some words about. Let's see, where did it go? Oh, there it is. And there's that one. So, see, I'm good on the fly. I can pull them up mm -hmm. quick, hopefully. Um, so, so, <laughs> I'm going to do that to you yeah, again. Drop something on me at the last minute. And I'll show you how good. <clears throat> um, but it's good to know. So, and you've read it or you're reading it and it's helped you. So now you guys can see why John nor I could yeah. pronounce this guy's last name. Let's just call him Luke. Um, because <laughs> his last name is right there. <laughs> um, so you have also done, I mean, the Metro Cash is a huge system of things. You've also done a lot of other things. I like to them, uh, files, stuff like that. And I, I just spoke to the client uh, just the other day, and they said that they had a 20% 20 20 increase, increase on the amount of people on the amount of people that use them from last year since the last year. Yeah, that's huge, so, man. That you should add that to your site where it says like there's a 20% increase because that's you know as designers sometimes we don't get that feedback. So that feedback. That's huge. It is tw that. I mean, even we think two percent is pretty good. Yeah, that was before. Yeah, and that was before uh, the last of the website. So I'm going to only mention that after after the the uh, the last of of the website, it would oh, be for even sure. more. For sure. Well, I um I want to definitely yeah. talk about um a couple other things. You did a disability poster for um. VCU, you had a series because it was kind of another series, but they definitely look um, there. You know, so I'm going to pull the A one up. So, do you want to talk about that one? We're kind of skipping around a little bit, but I hope that's okay. Sure. <laughs> so, so sure. this is a great um, one. I love this piece. I think it's it's very VCU looking. I mean, you know, we tend to design similar. <laughs> Uh, from um, uh, uh, PCU has, um, as if you don't know, PCU is a big school, um, and uh, a big component of the school is they do um, research. It's a big research institution, and, 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 and half of that, um, they have different outreach programs. I guess it could say, I, I don't know the exact word that might have with this, but they have a, a group a group of, um, you know, a group, I guess it says, that, uh, that works within the confines of, of the school. And this one particular group that 
contact me. Uh, they are uh, advocates for people with disabilities. And uh, because I have a disability, um, and I'm very open about my disability, uh, as much as I can be, uh, you know, I guess they got my name from that. And they contact me. Um, and um, they say that uh, we're going to have this campaign um, in 10 to 12 uh, public school systems uh, to teach kids uh, about you know, about people with disabilities, or how they want to be treated, you know, uh, just, just to bring, just to bring a, a way of the different problems that people with disabilities face every day in, in their lives. So I was very behind, uh, you know, this campaign and what they're trying to do, man. They actually named Otobo as uh, Otobo Disability History and Awareness Month. So I, I thought that was all great. And, um, and I normally don't like posters um, uh, as a formal publication, primarily because, you know, um, you know you know, with all the different devices that we have, you know, today, and uh, the, the different things that we have to communicate with people, um, posters are popping on the niche IT application that we can deliver a message to a big audience. But because these posters are going to be hand in, in schools, I thought that there would be, you know, a, a fine application for it. Um, so um, they originally want me to uh, use different images of people with disabilities and um, and try to um, do some kind of collage of these different people and. My response was, I just think that's a good idea because um, there's all kinds of disabilities and some of the disabilities that people have you can't see. Um, so, so, so to them, just trying to solve this problem without you know, trying to sidetrack people and you know, I was trying to say type of what a disabled person looks like. So, um, so I can't put myself on the spot on how there's no way I was trying to solve this problem. And because this was for um, for kids, you now I was thinking of you know for other kids they know the ABCs. And they, you know, you know, A is for Apple and B is for, for bus. So that was really what the, the idea behind it. Um, um, and uh, so I came with all the stuff and I can't try to force, uh, enforce, um, you know, the different things that all people with disabilities want to help. We, we want people to be aware of that. We have a ability that we want to be a separate. Uh, we also want the people to be aware of of who we are. Right. So. Well, that's cool. So, what about color palette? I mean, was it just bright colors because you wanted kids, or what was well, the? Well, uh, that is a great uh, question. Um, the one, the one, uh, the one to have colors. Uh, from a dark background, mm -hmm. so, so that uh, a person that can't uh, read um, or they can see their well, that the colors can help them read better, can be help them read the poster better. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I try to make it, you know, make it pop from that back 
I found. That's awesome. It's my five percent. So then the other one yeah. you, you did was the um let me see, let me pull it up. I love this one. Yeah. Well, yeah, well they uh they they originally had me um sign a contract just to design one. And uh, during my farm presentation, I presented two of them. And they said, well, can we use both of them? So uh, I said, sure, I guess that's fine. <laughs> um, so this comes from the fact that um, um, during my uh, uh, you know, process, I was sketching at, you know, different ideas. and. I quickly worked on different people's disability, and I noticed that to um, spell uh, disability, you had to spell you know, the word Billy. So that's how that came about, how the rainbow of colors of Billy came to be. And super colorful, so, which was super great for kids. The words ability and that full color scheme, I think, is a really nice choice. Yeah, so I just wanted to make it as bright and as people uh, as possible. Well, cool. So then you also did something I asked you um, before, like what one was one of your favorite projects, and um, or how have you seen some results, and what were some of the results? And this is amazing. I can't wait for you guys to hear this one. This is about the green dot. So we, he just told us about MetroCash, now 20% more people using their services. Listen to this. So can you tell us about the Green Duck? And so I'll pull up the first one. This was for the equestrian, um, was it, how many go back to my notes, your notes that you gave me? Oh, okay. um, how poo, just tell me. Equestri World Equestrian well, Games. Right? Right, exactly. So this is a event uh, that is hosted in Kentucky and as many of you know, um, um, you know, Kentucky is well known for horses, you know. And um, so this event lasts for two weeks. Two weeks. And a couple and uh, two weeks a couple of uh, um uh, I, I was able to go to the games myself, but it was a lot of um, ground, uh, ground. So, and I had thousands of people that went to this event. So, um, and they were trying to do, you know, how they get the credit, they, they were trying to do. Uh, the best thing was was trying to um, reduce waste from this event. So, as you can imagine, um, that being that this event was for you know 14 days roughly, and had thousands of people. Um, there was not a class that you know. That had to be thrown away. Right. But it had to be thrown away. So they hired a company in Richmond uh, um, called Green Dog. Uh, um, and Dawson Tice, she's a friend of mine, she owns she own Green Dog. And they hired Green Dog to um, organize all the tracks to, to develop a system uh, on. You know, I want to um, divide the class up into you know, different categories. You know, we saw a go couples, race, you know, why not? So they they came to us. You know, um, I guess sort of like a month before the the games. So it really gave us the most time to really explore a lot of different options, but. Uh, uh, so we created a, a system of signs uh, to help people know exactly what type of, you know, what kinds of things can be thrown away in different waste plastics. So the blue waste plastic, all the recycle, 
uh, we're going now. Uh, and uh, so we give them different um, images to look at, to know, you know also plastics, you know, uh, cans, so they can know exactly what goes in what plastic. Because sometimes and, it's um, confusing when you're out somewhere, you're like, well, are they going to recycle this plastic or is it just cans? So I think that's actually super helpful, especially on an event that lasted so long and it had so many, yeah. was such a big area. Uh, and I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, I know from the thought that this was not going to be, you know, the most, you know, damaged piece I ever did. Um, I mean, the, the, the uh, design is not that complicated at all. Uh, so, but it, it is present in some way. So, and at this time, I had, um, during this time, I was working with a uh, business partner. Uh, this is a couple years ago, but uh, at that time, I had a business partner, and together we would work on, on this project together. Uh, uh, so it's not just me and the something else. And, uh, well, you only had a month, and, right? And we were able, and we were able to um, save fifty-six percent of plastic going to the the, the landfill. Fifty-six percent of, I mean, that is huge. So from the year before, or I guess you just you just um, this year they had recyclables and compost. Which they didn't have the year before, and they were able, or maybe they did, but the, with your signage and everything. I, I mean, don't know what they had before, but I know that because of what we did, they had um, you know, a system in place to help organize this whole effort. That's 56% you know, is yeah. huge. I mean, that means normally people would be throwing everything away, and you saved over half. Um, was either being composted or recycled, which is awesome. I mean, and especially that you did this in a month is pretty amazing. So here's a, a close-up of the um, um, compostables. So, But it, again, it gives you an idea of what I can put in. So I think that's great. Yeah. So um, it's, it's uh, if missing design uh, for those who don't know that. So information design. Cool. So um, I asked you one time, what was your most uh, memorable, or um, what was a piece that you liked the most? And um, you, and because we're running out of time, but um, so I want to pull this up. This is. Um, can you talk a little bit about this retrospective? Yeah. Well. Um, uh, the reason why it's one of my favorite projects is just is the fact that I was able to um, create a system across different platforms. So the first application was a whole exhibit. Uh, so I designed the uh, final graphics that went onto the wall as you see here, and I also designed uh, the panel, the, uh, the, the different panels that go in this uh, exhibit, and I also design uh, the website as well. Cool. Well, and that's um, and so this is on our wall. There's all the final graphics on top of that, and you can see from this photo uh, two of the panels for. Set of panels at the, at the bottom of the screen there. Cool. And then this is another one from it. Yeah. And uh, what else is interesting from this is that the panels were, were made up of, of material that can be recycled or they can um, vibrate into the ground. Ah, cool. Um, so that, that's, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, definitely. Great design, too. By the way, not that you don't know that probably, but it, it's, it's really nice. It's very clean, very modern. Um, so here's another piece from a panel. I just like the um, quote. <laughs> yeah, and uh, what 
what um uh the uh the, the final graph is somewhat on top of the panels, so it's not really what they had in mind. Uh, they just wanted to have the different panels, but I said because they got a tall scene, you know, it needs to take a sense of that state. So, so I got some copy to also, the surfaces for free to make that happen. Awesome. So, yeah. You're pretty good at that part, uh, getting people to help you. Or we, when we get to Think House, which we only have like uh, eight, nine minutes left, so I have to talk about that. But this is just kind of a bigger uh, picture of kind of what the piece looks like. And I think that you were thinking about the whole height is awesome. Um, and that mm. the material, wow, that's super cool too. So, so Think House, can you kind of explain a little bit about um, what it was and, or what it is? I mean, house Talk. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. House Talk. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know no one person that, that did that. But anyway, uh, House Talk is a set of events that I organize and I'll put together to um, bring the conversation uh, to about social conscious to the everyday person. So every uh, um so I didn't out high talk the first year I did that um we had that we had them in the gallery in, in a small gallery um uh, and we had them every month uh, so we had you know drinks and food and a topic at the time. So the topic was different. So one topic was uh, green design, and then the next month was something different. And um, and, uh, and after the first year of that, that was just crazy to organize and then every month. So, uh, the, um, so therefore, Apple is basically every month. So it was by monthly. And uh, so, so we had this different events that I organized, and, and then I began to host them at different places and restaurants, bars, stuff like that. So, and um, at first it was just it was, it was really, yeah, yeah, it was with about you know, get, uh, get people to come to us. Uh, Condemn and talk about those different issues that affect um, a society. That's cool. So it was really for anybody. It wasn't just for designers. But did you have a lot of people, a lot of design people that would come? Oh yeah, we did. I mean, we had a lot of you know, designers and, and whatnot. But I really want to, uh, you know, you know, you know, make it known. To the non design as well. Cool. It was more important to me. Yeah, and so. Not, not that. Yeah. So you were saying when you were at the not store, that, people would say, oh, you're the house talk guy. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, so after, after a while, you know, um, the word got around about these different events, and, uh, and I go to different grocery stores or the floor and people would recognize me as the guy that won this event every, every other month. So. so that's pretty cool. So, I mean, you're doing this while you're yeah. teaching, you're doing this while, I mean, it takes a ton just to get one person to come on with me and do a, you know, an interview. I, and he's doing this twice a month at, at when when it was in full swing, you were doing oh, well, yeah, well, it. Once every two months. Once every two months. It's still it's a ton of work because it's an event. I just have to get with John and he has to we have to make sure he has headphones and we have to make sure his mic works. The end, that's it. So but sometimes I mean, I can only imagine when you're having to rent a location or you're having to get stuff catered or, or whatever, it's a ton and then doing all the promotion. So I think. No, well, I think I think the one thing I can say uh, about about that is that um, 
After a while, this event took a lot of of its own, you know, and everyone got easier to come along. Yeah. And that if you just put your mind to, to something, you know, it will happen. And that uh, if you have the best attention to get people to come together and talk about important issues, you know, that's, that's really how all the battle. Amen, I hear you. Because I think it's important to get designers to talk about design, and that's why I do this every week. So I'm, and and, you know, but it still takes, it's a lot of work, and you're teaching, and you and you have uh, Think House, so you're designing, you're doing things, so, and not to mention, I don't want to completely forget your photography, because I really like it, it just resonates with me, I'm very tactile, like when I go in the store, if I see something soft, I want to touch it, one time I remember I was at work, and um, I'm sure my bosses in Denver would be completely ashamed that I'm admitting this on camera, but um, there was this lady, and she had this jacket, and it looked so soft, and I never needed to meet this lady, and I wouldn't have even seen her, but I was just going to the bathroom, and I was like, I'm going to have to meet her, so I shook her hand, and then I petted her arm with my other hand, just so I could touch her coat, so I'm, the, your photos are like that, they, <laughs> they make me want to touch it, so I'm going to pull some of these up, so Hopefully none of my students will make fun of me. But, I mean, you have so many other projects I really would love to talk about. Well, we only have four minutes. But I don't want to forget your um, your photos. So, I mean, the color is rich, but it's also composition to me. It's where where you've chosen to put the, the vertical lines, the shadows. the I mean, that it is so textural. Do you want to talk a little bit about your – because they're, they're very similar, but they're different. Well, well, um, I've been doing this uh, photography, this type of photography, since my undergrad days at TCU, um, and for the for, for the longest time, I always say I wish I had a camera with me all the time, but you know, I just don't want to carry around my camera all the time. So, um, <laughs> so. But the all changed when I got my iPhone. Yeah. Uh, so, um, so now that I have my iPhone, um, now um, I begin to take, you know, this I see it every day. So um, this one, uh, I saw driving home for work one day, and and. Um, no, so you know, I just put on the side of the room and took this photograph. So my photograph is inspired by the bar house and uh, the uh, tomographic, the new tomographic style. Uh, there's a, 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 a certain kind of, of you know, it's hard to get to be do. So. Right, I'm going to pull this one off and I'm going to put another one. This is my other, like my, I don't know. That one was not my favorite. I'll show you my favorite in a minute. But this is my, one of mine. I just think this is beautiful. Um, yeah, was, was that um, a mall? Uh, and uh, I was sitting inside of the parking deck. Oh. And I was walking to my car and and, and that's what I saw. So, um, yeah, you know, I don't really take that much time to do, uh, you know, you know to uh, take this. Uh, <laughs> you know, I don't just don't take that much time to. Uh, um, and so I always go out, you know, one afternoon and take both of progress. I mean, I just do this throughout my whole day. It's just about having that eye of being a noticer and being able to see something. So this is probably, yeah. this isn't my favorite either, but it's one of mine because he has a ton and I had to pick, but they all are like warm except that one that I just showed, but I love that one. So this one I really mm -hmm. like for its collage kind of feel. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to talk about this one? Because I don't really know what this is even. Uh, it's, it's a... Uh... 
sometimes I have a, a sign, mm. and I don't remember exactly what it is, but I took it with me. I was in this man, uh, and I was, uh, it's, it's a sign, I, I, I forgot what sign it was, but it's, it's a sign, you know, uh, and it has different stickers on top of the sign, so that's, so the, the, the tinsel part is, what it's, that's the sticker part, and because of that visual side, you know, the, the, the color of the sticker, kind of fade away and this is what was left behind. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful piece. This piece reminds me of the conciliatory or the, con you know, the, the, I'll sh pop that up. This is, I don't know if it influenced it at all, but it reminds me of just this texture of this piece that he designed, which I, we don't really have time to get into it, but it's just that same sort of, oh, yeah. I mean, um, it's just beautiful, and he has something like a, I think this is there's a video of this, like you did some video shooting for this project as well, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if if you guys yeah. want to look, and, uh, and my, and, uh, my my uh, my business my business partner at the time she put that thing together, so I, I can't take credit for that. But, but so uh, it wasn't the business the mm -hmm. part, yeah, but it's a cool cool piece. Um, so then this yeah. is my, I, I, I did design, I did design that post up on myself. So, so um, Joyce, I never really, I, I never met that, to make that connection between that person and that photograph. So, so uh, they never really occurred to me into that. So they can still do that. Oh, well, so cool. even this piece, um, which is still part of that, uh, conciliatory, Conciliation is I, I you know it just has that mm -hmm. kind of feel of those stickers that kind of like uh, brokenness everything wasn't perfect and I love that and it's even though it's I think it's just black and white right yeah and I I first say that this is for an organization that conducts field performances about uh, about the dialogue of racism anyway it's it's really cool and. Some of the videos are kind of, because it is talking about racism, um, you may think, wow, this is a little edgy, but it's really good. And I, but this piece I really liked as well. And I like the, t I like how sometimes we overdo designs. And if we just step back and do something in black and white and just tear paper or, you know, it's just, it's such mm -hmm. a nice, simple, beautiful design. So, but I have to bring on my last, um, my favorite photo. It's this one. I uh, that one. Yeah, I, I took that one in the pocket deck the same time that I took the one with the light. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so, um, Nanka took the floor. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm addicted to take a photograph. I, I, I can't stop that <laughs> myself. So, um, 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 you no, know, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm surprised that I haven't got hit by a car yet. <laughs> 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 you no, know, but I'm glad you have. Um, <laughs> um but you know, like I said, you know, just like I said before, it's really about you know um, what you see every day and trying to capture that. Definitely. You know, Definitely. Well, and uh, if and anyone that or anyone that has the iPhone knows how good of a camera it has. So um, and I use all kinds of different apps um, on my phone to take my photos. I just don't use one. I use multiple ones. So, and also, you know. Because design sometimes take a, takes a long time to produce, uh, my book you know, takes a second to, to make. So it kind of fulfills, um, you know, fulfills my need to make stuff. Feels that creative uh, bug in us, I guess. But it, you have to. Oh, yeah, that, that bug. You have yeah. you have to have the right. I mean. 
you definitely have the eye to make those. So you should keep making those for sure. Not that. Oh, I got to. Yeah. I'm addicted to them. <laughs> well, I'm going to pull up some of the ways for people to get in touch with you and get in touch with me. And this one is the um, Conciliation Project. This is the link to the website that him, uh, John, and his partner, which uh, the Think House, designed. And then um, this is John's um, personal website. And it has design on it as well, as well as teaching and, and has photography on that one. So if you guys want to see the rest of them that I couldn't all bring up. And then this is Think House. It's not that difficult to um, think. But thankfully, we know how to, you know, Think House. I think, guess that's the, is it's like how the Bauhaus would spell house, right? So, mm -hmm. um, and then. I like that. So back to your problem. Yep. Oh, cool. So, and then you can also follow John on Twitter at Think House. And you can follow him on Facebook at facebook.com slash Think House. And, um, and then I, you can always email me at Diane at designrecharge.org. And if you ever have any questions, um, next week we're talking to one of my good Spreecast friends, Mitch Jackson. He's going to be talking to us about contracts, which he's a, he's a attorney. He definitely is an excellent storyteller. Um, and I think we all, sometimes that's not the side of the brain that we use is for contracts. You know, like they were like, oh, somebody else will do that. Or like our taxes, you know, it's like somebody else. So he's going to give us an idea of why and what and what we should put in there. But again, we're here every week. John, thank you so much. I'm so excited um, that you could come on. And we're going to have John on again maybe in August. We haven't set a firm date, but he's going to be talking about uh, design, his, um, his design teachers network. And we'll put on some of the other stuff that he didn't get, like the, the stuff from um, the CECA or CY, right? Um, I can't think of what it is. Um, oh, um, C E. This thing. Yeah, C E C Y. Yeah. So in this in California, wow. and so it's just a really cool another cool piece that John's done that has an awesome system. So check it out on his website. Um, but John, thank you so much. You were awesome, and I'm so excited that I could have you on today. So. Um, oh, I have to I have to say that you are awesome to have in this. So. <laughs> well, John, again, we'll we'll have him back on in August. But thank you, thank you so much, and have a great summer. And I hope you have fun grading. Okay, I <laughs> will. Have a good one. That's thank a, you, guys. That's the worst part of our job as a teacher is grading. I think at least it's not fun. I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Well, thanks so much, John, <laughs> and I'll see y'all next week. Okay, bye.